Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here, and today we have a Capture One tutorial, and I'm going to let you in on a technique that I've been using that I really haven't seen uh, videos for anywhere, and it allows me to get a really great result with skin before I even go to Photoshop. Uh, so I want to share that with you today, and it's uh, going to be a little convoluted, and at face value it may sound simple, but when I show you the technique, I think you'll see why I get a better result with the way that I'm doing it than with how I think other tutorials may handle the similar situation. Uh, so we're going to be talking about dodging and burning, and it's a little more advanced than just going over and making the bright parts brighter and you know your standard dodge and burn attack methodology. Uh, I want to talk about some things that you can do in Capture One because of the layer system. So uh, first of all, this image is not mine. It came from a website called We Saturate, and I will link to it below, and you can download the RAWs for these from that website. It's apparently there for people that would like to practice editing, so a lot of great images are available, and they're not the JPEGs, they're the actual RAWs. Now we want the RAW because when we're doing adjustments inside of Capture One on RAW data, we are doing mathematical adjustments. We are taking the data from the sensor in the camera and applying math to it. That's why we use a raw processor. Now once we leave a raw and we're in a JPEG situation, we're dealing with pixels at that point. And any adjustments to those pixels are nowhere near as accurate as they would be had we done them first with the raw processor. So you're going to see this technique is powerful because the changes we make here do not have the detrimental problems that these type of techniques have once they're pixels. So I always want to do any of my major uh, exposure or contrast adjustments first in RAW before I go to Photoshop, and it makes a world of difference. So make sure you understand that. You make your major shifts in RAW before you go to Photoshop. So if you're trying to brighten an image in Photoshop, you're going to get a worse result than you would if you bothered to do that first before you left your raw processor, but whether we capture one or Lightroom, again, it's a raw processor. Okay, so let's get started on this. So my first thing I like to do is just for exposure sanity is I like to make sure that the brightest part of her cheek is about 1% or I'm sorry, one stop over 18% gray. So on the curve, the middle here is 18% gray. And then I like this, the Caucasian skin to be right in here. So if I look, she's a little bit bright. Uh, but that's fine, and that was well done by the photographer. I always try and push my curve as far as I can, and I, I like that. Uh, so something like there-ish. And then maybe I'll increase the shadow detail a bit. Now, notice that I can do this now, but if I try and do this later in Photoshop, you're just going to get a train wreck. Because once we have it in a JPEG format, we are pushing pixels at that point. Uh, so we can make some pretty aggressive changes here. So I'm just going to kind of get this the way that I want it. And I may add contrast later, but yeah, maybe not. I don't know. But... That doesn't matter. And uh, the highlight slider, by the way, is very useful now and it becomes useless later. So if you try and use the highlight recovery on a JPEG, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's like the make gray slider. So really this highlights the power of raw processing and why you make your changes here. Okay, I'm beating a dead horse. Let's move on. All right, so first of all, we're gonna make a new layer. And I'm using a Wacom tablet, by the way, uh, but I do not have pressure sensitivity enabled. It's just the way that I work. Uh, so we're going to create a burn layer. Um, we're just going to call it burn. And that is uh, uh, that is darkening uh, for everybody at home. And then we're going to create a dodge layer. And that is brightening. And uh, the secret behind this technique is that when I'm making the adjustments in RAW, I will not get color shifting. So if you try dodging and burning inside of Photoshop, you'll notice that when you when you dodge or burn over a lighten or darken area, you get a color shift because the saturation in the shadow area is not the same as it would be for everything else. So it tends to kind of shift to the red and sometimes significantly if you have to make a major correction. In here, that doesn't happen. So you can dodge and burn in here and get a much better result than you can in Photoshop. And it'll be cleaner uh, because again, we're dealing with the raw data. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we just go to our darken layer and we're just going to tell it the exposure is minus one. And that's it. And on our brighten layer, we're going to say that the exposure is plus one. This means that we have the ability to shift exposure by a total of two stops. So I'm going to start with my brush here. My brush settings are 100% opacity, which is pretty much where I play. 
and then a very low flow. Um, and then the size will change as we go around and the hardness and all that kind of stuff. I don't, don't really care about those. But if I go and I just, now I am working on the brighten layer here and I'm going to be drawing a mask more or less because the mask right now is, there is no mask. It's, it's not applying any of these changes to the layer. Uh, but if I go and I paint into that layer, you can see that I am making a shift of one uh, stop. So if I hit M on the keyboard to see my mask, you can see that we have a mask there. So how does this, how do we go about dodging and burning this image? The biggest problem is where do you dodge and burn? And I think that's the challenge most people run into. And I'm not talking about doing a kind of stylized dodge and burn. I'm looking for a corrective method of dodge and burn. So how do you see it? And that's the biggest problem. So here's the part that gets a little convoluted. So inside of Capture One, I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna click and hold, and I'm gonna create a new filled layer. And I'm gonna take the saturation of this layer all the way down. So this is giving me a, an accurate black and white. So we're just gonna call this BW. On top of that, I'm gonna put one more curve. And again, I'm gonna click and hold and create a new filled layer. And uh, on this one, this is my, we're gonna call it the working curve. And you're gonna see me do this in Photoshop at some point when I eventually get around to uh, my couch and Photoshop, couch to, fo <laughs> couch to Photoshop tutorials you'll eventually get around to using working curves and they're so powerful and we can we can do this inside of capture one which you know sorry lightroom this is this is where where that uh, the big boys come to play uh, so i'm going to kind of zoom in down here a bit um, i wish capture one would eventually get the dragging capabilities that photoshop has but you know so you see there's some blotchiness in her skin here because her sun, her suntan sunburn is peeling. Now, we are not going to be able to correct a lot of that skin texture problem. That's not our goal here. We're going to do that inside of Photoshop eventually, not in this tutorial, but later. Um, but I want to make sure if I can get any color or any hue, any value fixes that are possible in RAW, I should do them now. I've, I'm just going to get a better result. And then I, I like lines on the neck and things like that. And you see we have some things in the face that we can also work on. But again, is, is this easy to see? It's, it's not really easy to see. So the working curve is here for that reason. This curve has no rules, okay? So keep that in mind. So you can do anything you damn well want to do with it. And this is where I just really start torquing on it. So my goal is to kind of walk the curve across the image. So I'm gonna start here. And uh, again, it's gonna be like, what the hell is this guy doing? Uh, as I'm working this curve, you can start to see in here that we have some darker areas. Uh, here, there's some darker areas. And it's like the contrast is so high. What is cool about this technique is that Anything you see under this microscope of contrast, I mean, this is such a steep curve. Once this curve is removed, you're not gonna see the problem anywhere near as blatantly. So our correction is also going to be very minor. So let's do some, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Corel Painter's lovely spam thing popping up. All right, so let's start over here. Now, remember a pimple is simply a, a highlight and a shadow. So if you remove the highlight and the shadow, then we should have no more pimple. We uh, want to make sure that our working curve is showing us some issues. So I like it to be really steep. And I'm just going to work across the image. I'm going to work fast. So I'm just going to go click on Brighten. I have my brush B. I'll make it tiny. Uh, and I, I tease and I say the, the closer you zoom in, the more you like the person. Because if you zoom in, you're going to seriously get caught in the minutia of skin and all those little crevasses. And you'll get lost and spend hours in there. And then find out you only moved like half a cheek. So I would tell you to zoom out a bit. Uh, this is probably a pretty comfortable working range. So I'm just going to use my brush here. And um, I don't know why Capture One is jumping around like that. Pick this size brush and just kind of paint over the areas that look like they're dark in this with this super aggressive curve. Very simple. And uh, looks like my flow is still a bit, a um, bit much. So I'm just going to set this to one. Bigger, bigger brush. And the goal again is to just eliminate any quick transition. So if you have a transition that's aggressive, you know, it's going from a dark to a light real fast. I want to change that so it's not so aggressive. 
and anything your eyes kind of drawn to is fodder for this technique. So I'm just going to fill in any areas that my eye is drawn to. Uh, we can do that with zits as well. We can go in and remove those pimples by removing the shadow and the highlight side, but realistically, it's easier to do that in frequency separation inside of Photoshop. So once I have this how I want it, and this looks fine to me, I'm going to work, go to my working curve, and I'm going to walk it a little bit farther to the left. And again, I'm just kind of taking in and pulling it over. And you got to kind of look past the areas that are going to start to get blown out. Um, we don't care about this anymore. We've already, we've already worked on that spot. And we're just working on the other areas that are becoming obvious to us as we move this curve across. So I'm just looking for areas where I have a dark spot that probably shouldn't be there. And this will end up with a much better result for skin. And I'm going to move quickly here because otherwise this video will take forever. Move our working curve again. We're just kind of moving across the image. Remember, there are no rules for this curve. You can do anything you want to do with it. I'm going to zoom in a bit. Oops, drawing on my working curve. Yeah, be careful with that. I do not know why Capture One is jumping whenever I am touching it at this uh, zoomed in factor. So here I'm going to really kind of fill in those areas. And again, I'm, I'm not going to worry about trying to cover up every little zit at this point. Let's get rid of the bigger transitions. Hold on spacebar, I can move around. What new areas have come into view of this technique? The spots up here. Okay. I'm sure you're probably seeing some that I'm missing because I'm hurrying, but you know, you get the idea behind the technique. All right, so working curve, a little bit more. And again, there are no rules for what the curve looks like. You decide. So um, although I do like to span top to bottom, uh, that's pretty much the only rule I have with how I, how I put this thing down. So uh, we do know a little bit of anatomy, so we know we're not going to flatten all this stuff out because we do not want to get rid of her personality and the shape of her skull and so on because you can actually change a face pretty substantially if you mess with it enough. Just looking to move some of these bigger pieces. I especially when I go down here, like this is an area that I really wanted to play with. So let's see what we have here. So we just kind of make these look a little bit more even. Now, obviously we have two curves here. We have a brighten and we have a darken. Now, right now, my eye, and I think most people's eyes, tend to see the areas that need to be brightened and not so much the areas that need to be darkened. Um, but that's, you know, whatever you want to do. But if you're having trouble in an area, then you can work both of those curves together. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play with this again because I want to try and focus on the front of her shoulder here a bit. And I'm just trying to make my work more obvious, like, or what I want to work on more obvious. Here we go. So in this situation, I see something I need to darken. So these areas here, pull these down a little bit. Just kind of creating a, a much better looking transition. So once you're done with this, um, you can use a lot of the great retouching or skin tone, the... Uh, the uh, ability for Capture One to make all the tones homogenous uh, will really help you here. Once you have all of this stuff done, uh, it's a lot easier for Capture One to deal with that, and it looks a lot better. So just kind of make this all look a little bit more even. Something like that. Anyway, I think you get the idea. 
And you're just looking for anything that kind of draws your eye. And I skip around a lot because I want my eye to be fresh. And if you're in one area for too long, I think that you kind of don't see the forest for the trees type of thing. Uh, so I uh, just want to take my time, but hop around as I'm working on different things. All right, so let's take a look at this now. So I just did her shoulder here a bit. And so we'll turn off our working curve and our black and white. And then uh, I'm going to hold down Alt in, uh, well, no, that's not actually going to work. Let's just do it this way. So that's with the, both those dodge and burn layers on. So you can see now we have just a little bit of redness to handle, but the rest of that is all handled. And although that looks like a minor detail, I think that makes the skin look a lot more natural. And we have a zero color shifting inside of here. Uh, because we're dealing with, again, the raw information. So on her face, um, kind of the same thing. We've added those little bits of detail have been brought out, and we have less skin retouching to do, uh, and I think it looks better. So any any type of dodging and burning that you can do, especially this type of corrective dodging burn, I think you'd want to do in RAW before you go to Photoshop rather than trying to do it in Photoshop. I just think you're going to get, a, well, I know you're going to get a much better result. So I hope that makes sense. This layer stack is pretty common. When you're done, you delete the working layer and the black and white. You don't need them. You only need these two. And then you would go ahead and take it into Photoshop and continue on your merry way. Uh, but that should give you, um, and I obviously did this very quickly, but that should give you that much better result for your skin than had you not uh, done it first. So hopefully that helped. Uh, leave any questions or comments below and I will get back to you on them. I'll also put a link to my Capture One discount. Uh, as a Capture One ambassador, I can offer a discount. So I'll always put a link to the lowest possible prices that Capture One is offering at that time. So if you want to use that, go ahead and click on it. I appreciate it. And I will catch you next time.